There are six major points to keep in mind to produce quality silage. Firstly, you must work cleanly. What does working cleanly mean? It means you must avoid introducing bad bacteria into the silo. These bad bacteria are present in the soil, and they are present, for example, in manure. The problem is, for example, fecal coliform. It can also be bacteria or microorganisms like listeria. The second most important point for producing quality silage is to minimize the time the grass spends in the field between being cut and being put in the silo. The reason is simple enough. The plants contain enormous amounts of enzymes. From the moment the plant is cut, the message is sent to it that it is in the process of dying. So the plant changes a lot due to the activity of these enzymes. The enzymes will consume the plant of the energy value that is contained in the grass, which will greatly reduce the food value for the cow. The third point is to really know the humidity and the cut length of the material being put into the silo. If the silage is too wet, there will be a discharge. You will see juice leaking from the silage. Fortunately, with this liquid, you lose a lot of high-quality elements such as sugars and proteins. Try to improve the drying rate of the grass. It is the key part of silage success. We recommend, for example, making wide swaths to ensure that all the grass has access to the sun, that it dries in a uniform and fast way. On the other hand, if the silage is too dry, you'll find that you cannot properly consolidate the mass, properly compact it. Air will be present in the silage and then molds and yeast will develop. Then, unfortunately, the temperature will rise and there will be a loss of dry matter and, above all, a loss of quality in the silage. Fourthly, it is important that the humidity and the chopping length be adjusted according to the type of silo selected. For example, if a vertical silo is used, you will adjust the level of the dry matter or the humidity depending on the size of the silo. Because naturally, in a vertical silo, it is gravity that will exert pressure on the silage at the bottom of the silo. If you choose to make your silage in round bales, then you have material that is not chopped, that ferments very slowly. In that case, you would choose a higher level of dry matter, around 45-50% dry matter. Fifthly, you must establish and maintain the air tightness of the silo. You must ensure that your round bales are wrapped in plastic as quickly as possible after the cut to immediately impede the air entry into the bale. And you must also be sure to close all holes that may be caused by birds or rodents during the storage period to once again well maintain the air tightness of your system. When you open the silo, be sure to feed out enough silage so that the silage remains stable and maintains its quality. The silage is never dead if it is a product that maintains itself in an air-free environment. If you reintroduce air, the material will begin to ferment. So you must be sure to feed out a sufficient quantity of silage every day, and to work the right way. For example, in horizontal silos, maintain a face that is as smooth as possible to impede the deterioration of the silage. The quantity to be taken out will change depending on the season. In winter, when it is cold, you can afford to remove a little less silage than in summer, when temperatures are very high and when microorganisms that are present in the silage will begin to work very quickly. The flexibility of the harvest system is extremely important when it comes to silages, because of climate variations from one season to another and from one year to another. The farmer must be in a position to react very quickly to ensure quality silage year after year.